Hello again, and welcome to Winning with the Wrangler at Dick Powell's Leadership Corner, brought to you by Earth, Wind, Fire, Water, Training, and Development, where our passion is building leaders of today and tomorrow. Leaders on today's program, we've gathered information from many different places and many different people. So if you hear yourself in our conversation today, please remember, it is not all about you. Today, I'm going to introduce you to someone who, quite frankly, has become a good friend. His name is Steve Kampkin, C-A-M-K-I-N, and he has a new book called High Altitude Leadership, Small Steps to Get You to the Top of Big Mountains. Now, Steve is an outdoorsman, and he has been to the top of those big mountains. He's a mountain climber and a kayaker, and you name it, he's done it and traveled all around the world doing it. He's led large expeditions and small ones, even just him and I going out for a kayak ride. Now, Steve owns a company. He's a founder of a company called Three Peaks Consulting, LLC. It's an alliance of global leadership and organizational development, and it's, it's an alliance of, of great professionals. And I'm, I'm proud to take and be with, with him, okay? So let's look at this because I think Steve can bring you a different way of looking at leaders and leadership. I know when I met Steve, and when you get two outdoors guys together, what we normally talk about is <laughs> which kayak we're going to take or, or what, where we're going to go hiking next or, you know, what mountain we're going to climb. And when we started talking about it, he said, Dick, he says, you, you write a lot about leadership and leadership in businesses and organizations and in churches and, and in families. And I said, yes, I do. And he said, let's look at something and let's look at it a little differently. And he handed me his new book, High Altitude Leadership. Now, knowing that he's been to the top of a lot of mountains that required really super leadership, I started really spending time and asking him a lot of questions. And of course, he said, hey, let's, let's look at some things within my book and let's talk about them. The first thing I asked him was, I said, what, what do you classify a great leader? What do you think is, you, they need to have within themselves and without to, to really lead in a way that all will be success. Well, Steve looked at me and kind of got quiet. And uh, we decided we'd go kayaking. And I could take some notes, which, by the way, is pretty tenuous when you're paddling. But it really worked out well. One of the first things that I jotted down as we were actually loading up, he said that real great leaders need to be visionary while not taking their eyes off the small details. Now, when he said that, it really resonated in a way that him and I had talked before. You see, we both realize that great leaders have a vision, a future picture. They have a mission. They know what their passion as well as their calling is. And they have a strategy. They have a plan. And they're able to communicate this to all those around them. The biggest part is never taking their eyes off the small details. But Steve went on to say you can't know the small details if you don't have a clue why you're doing something and you don't have a clue of what it's going to look like when you're done. Vision, future picture, mission, purpose strategy, plan. And I realized very quickly that we were on the same page. We were just using different terms. But it was funny. We were still using those same vision, mission, strategy. And we, him and I have used those for a number of years. Why? Because we have realized and we have seen, whether it's in a corporate setting or out in the woods, those things become important. Now, we also agreed on that great leaders are able to make brilliant decisions. Now, I don't know about you, 
But brilliant decisions, I don't know if I'm brilliant or not. But what it takes to make brilliant decisions is to be prepared, to have already done the research, to have already stayed on top of your career, to stay on top of what's going on in your, your organization and how it's going on there, and to stay on top of what's going on outside your organization and how it's going to affect everyone inside. You're the leader, and you have to understand what you decide and the decisions you make don't just affect you or just the corporation. They affect everyone within the company, on your team, and their families, and sometimes their families. That's why we need to put more time into that thought process. And we need to better communicate it to all those around us. Pretty good stuff. Now, Steve went on to say that uh, you need to stay abreast of industry changes. And I'll say that till I'm blue in the face. So many times people come into earth, wind, fire, water, train development. And for sometimes no fault of their own, they've just done their 30 years and the company's let them go or, or something's had this downsized and, and they've had to go find a new job. Many of them never stayed on top of the changes within their organization or changes on their, their industry. They didn't stay abreast of what's going on. And they didn't change not only themselves, but their thinking. Because of that, when they went to look for a new opportunity, they found that they were not prepared. And sometimes we had to go back and play catch up. So if you're in an organization, no matter where you're at in the level, no matter what leadership piece you hold, if that's your career, if that is what your chosen piece is, you really need to stay abreast of everything that's going on, which means you need to read books, magazines, articles, go to seminars, listen to speakers, take notes, learn, and be able to share. What this means is leaders turn into the person to go to because they've stayed on top and they have answers. When they have answers, this makes them ability to make really great decisions quite quickly. Now, went on to this next one. It said, attend to an increasing number of managerial tasks. First, I want to tell you that leaders lead people. Managers manage things. And that means managers manage tasks. And as leaders, many times we'll have to do some of those tasks ourselves. But as leaders, we have learned that delegation of tasks makes our world not only better, but it makes it fuller. Now, when we do that, we are telling the people around us that A, we trust them, and B, we need them. That's why they're there. So, you know, this whole thing of, of really um, small managerial tasks, well, there's some I do here myself that, quite frankly, only I can do. But, when there's something that needs done here that someone else can do 80% as well as myself, I delegate it out. It just only makes good sense. Now, the one he wrote here about developing employees who are increasingly starved for development, I have to tell you that this is a big one. One of our main jobs as leaders is to build more leaders. In order to do that, we have to constantly build relationships with our people. And when we do that, we need to really find out what they need and how they need to get it. A company, a local company, called me just a week ago and said, hey, our, our, our people are just really hungry to learn more about leadership, especially personal accountability and personal leadership. What can you do? And I said, well, let's sit down and talk about it and find out where we want to go and 
how we want to get there. And I went in and I talked to all the people that were excited about doing this. They're excited because they're at the point that they're wanting to learn more. And so we talked about the 360 leader leading from the middle. We talked about the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. And, and they decided that's where they wanted to start. Now, as I was doing the interviews, I really asked just one question. Because I want to know where they were at in, in, the, in the leadership learning tree, so to speak. Now, there were the ones who had not ever picked up a book and they haven't really done any in involvement or personal learning for a long time. And then there were the ones who had already bought the book, already started through it. And when I went into their office, I found many different kinds of opportunities. They were learning about their company, about their organization, about their career, and how to move and groove and get ahead and become a better leader. See, there were already two kind of people I was going to be working with. So as I was putting the program together, I realized that I was going to have to come at it in a little different manner. But the owner, I gave the owner a great big deal of credit for realizing, because he talked to his people and he was out working on, on building that relationship, really found out how starved they were for personal accountability and personal leadership development. And hadn't it going to be great for his company to grow and everybody be on the same page? I think it's a fantastic opportunity. Now, Steve says a mark of a great leader is one who's able to motivate people. You know, there's many times within an organization, company, church, family, where people kind of get sluggish. And we leaders, it's our job to find a way to motivate them. The thing I'm going to bring to you at this time is, is that everyone, well, yeah, I think everyone has a different mode of motivation and why they do things. A long time ago when I was an instructor, the person I worked for was a um, person who took time to build relationships, get to know people, and, and he, he motivated many different people in many different ways. For me, he could just get, you know, buy me a cup of coffee and, and talk for a few minutes, and that, that motivated me. I worked with some people. The only thing that motivated them was the cash, how much cash they were going to make. And it really didn't motivate them because I didn't find that if, even when I paid them more, they did a better job. They just felt they needed more money. I worked with people who liked the trophies. They wanted to be recognized in front of their peers. And the YDG award, the You Done Good award, really seemed to satisfy and make them you know, motivated to move ahead. And then there was the people who were self-motivated. They really didn't want to have anything to hang on their wall. They really didn't, you know, do it for the money. They really didn't. They were motivated because they loved their job. They loved people. And helping people help themselves is what they were, they just, they just exuded on. But from time to time, I did have to make sure that I recognized them in a manner that really motivated them. For them, many times it was it was at the banquet or it was at the end of the year or whatever it was, and I would, I would find a way to motivate them. So you're not going to know, leaders, what motivates each of your people. And one size does not fit all. But you're not going to know unless you take the time to invest in your people, invest your time. To get to know them, to get to know what their dreams are, what their goals are, what do they want to accomplish, and can they do it in your location? You see, sometimes we have people who work for us who have, even if they've been there a long time, that really wasn't their dream. So as leaders, I ask you this, can you help them achieve that goal or that dream? Something to think about. You'd be surprised how that'll motivate people.
I always found it to be a true thing to work. Well, one of the biggest ones he wrote here, he said, all these things are important, but there are, you need to know as leaders, we're having to learn to do things with less resources, small, tighter budgets, and do it in less time. The only way you can do that is to build those relationships. The only way you can do that is to build more leaders. The only way you can do that is to share knowledge. The only way you can do that is follow these steps. Now, as I really started spending more time with, with Steve, we, we found that one time is never going to be enough for him and I to get together. But he wrote something here, and I'm going to share it with you, and I, I, I hope Steve is okay with it, but I'm sure he is. He wrote down that he asked a question. Okay, so you want to be a leader. Can you survive? And I really started putting a lot of stock in that because, again, we're both outdoorsmen, and when we lead people, we're oftentimes in charge of many different folks who had many different skill levels. So when I read this, I got to get, get excited once more. He wrote down this, and you might want to jot this down, or if you want it, give me an uh, email and I'll send it to you. Performance equals skill times motivation times opportunity times resources times energy times self-awareness. And when I started looking at those things, I thought, this is really the things that make a great leader. Now think about it. Skills. What are your skills? What do you do best? You know, when I started as an outdoors person, sometimes my skill is how to start a fire best. I, it's what I do. But when I'm in the corporate office, something entirely different. My skill there is being a company spokesperson and being on stage and, and sharing my knowledge about how things go, about kind of building leadership in your corporation. So what are your skills? I'm going to encourage you to, to get that piece of paper and, and, and jot them down. And I want you to jot down all the skills that you're really proficient at. And then I want you to write down next to them a list of skills that you might need to work on or you're not proficient at. You see, great leaders look at that one list of they do really well and they do those first. And then they spend time over learning and spending time and getting better at those skills they need to really hone down. You see where I'm going here, right? The second thing was motivation. You'll find that I don't care where you go and who you talk to and who you in, you you inquire to, like like I, because I ask questions about everybody. But great leaders are self-motivated. You see, they don't need anyone to tell them to tell them what to do during the day. They either live by a task-oriented world with a, a list of things that need done every day, or they'd use their day runner, or they use something to make sure they're on task. But I have found even when we've been out to dinner with these folks. They'll, they'll take out their little pocket note and they'll, they'll make notes of what needs done. Or during a conversation, something they can help you out with. You see, that's what makes a great leader. But they're self-motivated. No, one, no one's there to say, okay, from 9 to 5, you're going to do this. Because great leaders are never there 9 to 5. When Steve and I are taking a group of people out in the world, it's, seven, it's, it's all day long, 24 hours a day, you're on. Because you're responsible for them. That's a big piece. Now, opportunity. The opportunity is always there with us. You see, opportunities are born every single minute of the every single day. Great leaders know which opportunity to grab a hold of and explore, to do the research, get prepared, and then to execute on it. Great leaders know what opportunity maybe someone else would be better at than them, and hand it off. You see, 
that's what makes the great leader ability to really look at opportunity and say, huh, that's something we need to do, or hmm, I don't think so. But again, knowing when to and when not to is the big thing. You see, opportunity is all about timing. What great opportunity might be a great one today might not be one tomorrow or vice versa. Now, resources. Great leaders know their resources. And resources come in things and they come in people. For me, I, I look at resources as people. What do they know? What can they do? What can they bring to the table? What, you know, what are the values they're going to bring? That's a big piece to my world. But when I was ahead of a line crew, resources oftentimes meant what kind of truck did we have? What was on the truck? Who could do what, when, where, how? And, and how long could they do it? But see, as a leader, we need to always look at all the parts and pieces. That's those small, minute, little things that we were talking about in the very beginning. You can't ever lose sight. You have to almost, in Steve's words, look globally as a leader. And that means you need to see not only just see the big picture of what's going on in your company, in your organization, but you have to see the big picture on how your organization fits within the global opportunity. It really does mean that. Energy. If you ever met Steve, <laughs> you would know that he's high energy. And my wife claims that sometimes I'm too uh, high energy and she has to slow me down. Now, all of us have a different energy rating. I have seen some people who are slow and steady. And you know what? I loved working with them. I loved having them on the team. The other people were moving fast, moving and grooving. They couldn't sit still if you if you if you tied them down. Their feet would still be bobbing up and down their leg, you know, something going on. Each person's different. Know what your energy level is. And leaders, here I want to give you a real hint. Know when your energy level is the best. For me, it's early in the morning. I'm up early and I write every morning because I've got a new book to get finished. And you know what? Two hours in the morning, six to eight is really perfect for me. And then I start to get sluggish about noontime. And after lunch, I have to take a time out. Then I get up and I'm refreshed. Late evening, it's like the switch turns turned on and I'm ready to go again. Know when your energy level is the best. Knowing that, and here's the key, knowing when, uh, when your people on your team, what their energy level is and when do they work best. That's why I, I love to have people around me who are self-motivated, other leaders, because I have one gentleman, quite frankly, I love him, don't get me wrong, but he drives me nuts because his, his time is like 2 in the morning. And guess when he calls me? <laughs> Fortunately, Miss Robin, my, my loving wife, is, is used to that call at 2.30 or 3. And she just goes back to sleep. You have to understand how this works. But the energy piece is so, so important. But you have to know when yours is. And as a leader, you need to know when other people's are. Really important. Self-awareness. You know, being self-aware used to be looked on as a huge ego. And I've been told that I've had one, and I guess I do. But here's more about self-awareness is, what are you all about? What are your values? What are your morals? What are your non-negotiables? What is your self-awareness of, of where you're at right now? Where do you want to go? How do you want to get there? You know, who do you want to be when you grow up? Being self-aware means 
I, I'm, I'm right here right now, but I want to go right there. And, and, and this is what I need to do to get there. You know, like I said, he followed it up with this last one here about motivation. And I, I, I just, when I looked at this, I thought to myself, this, this is just so good that I need to share it. I'm going to read it again. Performance. Okay, you got it? Performance equals skill times motivation. Self-motivation, okay? Skill, what you're good at. Motivation, self-motivation, times opportunity. Remember, timing is all about opportunity. Resources, who, what, when, where, how. Times energy, what is my energy level? When do I get, when am I best? Times self-awareness, who am I? And I'm honest about that answer. You see, this book is a lot about outdoors but it's really not Steve has really said that he's worked in many different corporate places and many different corporate things and having the, the three peaks consulting company has taught him that what we learned him and I both from leading groups out in the woods and living that lifestyle transfers to the boardroom in a very easy manner because leading a team in the boardroom needs all these same things. One of the biggest things that I learned as a person that ran a large corporation for a long time was the need to really slow down enough to build relationships of people on the team within the company for me to understand what their goals and their dreams were, and then I had to ask myself that question. How do I help them get to where they want to go? If it's within the corporation, that's a wonderful thing. Sometimes it was they wanted to learn a new skill, and all I had to do is provide that opportunity. You see... Leaders, this is our job. This is what we're called to do is build more leaders. And if we're not doing that, well, I don't think we're doing a very good job at that L word, okay? So remember these things that are in this book. Be a visionary while not taking your eyes off the small details. Be brilliant decision maker. Stay abreast of industry changes. Attend to an increasing number of managerial tasks. Develop employees in, who are increasingly starved for development. Be able to motivate people. And to understand that this is part of what you're called to do as a leader. I hope you've, you'll get this book, High Altitude Leadership, by Steve Kamkin, C-A-M-K-I-N and uh, take a look at it. I'm going to tell you what, if you're a leader, this is going to help you to go that little bit extra mile and look, and you're going to be able to take and build more leaders stand right beside you. Now, I see our time is running to close like always. So on behalf of myself, Dick Powell, and the whole Leadership Corner team, I do want to say thank you for being a part of today's program. Now, if you have any comments or questions on today's program, please don't hesitate. Give me a call. 727-422-1833. 727-422-1833. Send me an email. Dick at EWFW.org. Dick at EWFW.org. Or you know what? Go to the website. Spend some time. Look around and there's a box there you can click on and send me a note. Go to www.EWFW.org. Now, I'm going to give you a challenge, leaders to really start thinking about how you're interacting with all those around you. Ask yourself this question. Am I building new leaders or am I stagnant in my leadership ability? Well, when you're ready to have me come and do a leadership opportunity with your organization, give us a call because we book up really quick. 727-422-1833. And until next time, D.W. the Wrangler saying, ride hard.
ride fast.